Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice, where I get really excited about new trends in music. And Sleep Theory just crept into my radar. They received over 500,000 views on TikTok in the first 36 hours of the release of their first song. Like, first song, really. It has over a million views now on YouTube. And I really want to listen to it. And I have no idea what to expect. This is such a new band. There's not much information about them online. So I am going in even more blind than usual, but with excellent ears. So let's get to it. Whoa. Okay, let's talk about some immediate first impressions. This song feels like it's going somewhere very quickly. Uh, it There are sort of new tastes of new chapters uh, just super sandwiched together, one right after the other. Um, we've gotten a lot of different sort of feelings of this ebb in and then an ebb out, and a lot of what I would describe as sort of a modern video game, like Call of Duty almost, feel in the sound and the video too. Obviously, Crumbling World, maybe they uh, shared some notes with Falling in Reverse at some point, don't know. Uh, but the electronic elements, it, yeah, all of this lends itself to the feeling of a really epic battle game to me. Uh, before I go back all the way, just a couple first impressions of Colin's voice. Colin Moore is our singer here. I could find that online. <laughs> um, and I actually thought he was going to have a thicker sound right away. When he first started, I thought, oh, that's a lot more narrow and placed. But that is partly because it sounds like there was some production on it that made it sound like there was a, an extra filter there, uh, like he was singing through a little tube, essentially. I'll stop it and talk some more about that in just a bit. Back to the beginning. I like that hit. We got we got some squeaky squeaky going on in the background. That's part of what makes it feel like it's almost hard to place when this was created, even though I know it was created just just recently. But the you have your records essentially like the the squeak that's happening in there. There's those electronic elements, but then you have this really heavy guitar hit. This uh, this feels like it's uh, breaching a couple of different eras. You can absolutely tell that he's got a filter in his voice. It sounds like it's dropped out some of the lower end, so maybe it's like a high-pass filter. Um, but it also sounds like it's narrowed on the sides to me. There's something about the placement here. A lot of the other sounds feel more full in the mixing, so they've deliberately uh, honed his voice to a smaller size here. Interesting. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of production on this sound overall, and that's not a bad thing, right? <laughs> I think that that's definitely as it should be. 
um, at this stage of a song. If this was a live performance, we'd probably be getting a considerably different sound. I thought I heard a very, very light upper octave double on him, like super, super light, just to give a sense of the texture. Once he starts singing there, that uh, that filter, it feels like it's dropped. We get more body in this sound for sure. Yeah, I think it's very lightly in the mix, an upper octave. That kind of technique can help with things cutting through, though I have to say, he already cuts through a ton. It's just a, a little tiny nudge to give a, a more full produced sound overall. <sighs> really interesting that I don't, it's not common that I hear that technique in metal or rock. Um, and it could be he just has an incredible overtone that's really coming out at that part of his voice. That's possible. I think I hear it in the production though. Whoa, whoa, that was, that's more of the kind of heavy sound I was expecting. He gets, he gets a lot more body into his sound at that point. He still has got that narrow focus on top to make it super clear. Um, but the first sound it had, a, it had a lot of extra elements produced on it, um, which I think actually follows some of the other trends in metal I've been seeing recently that have a lot more electronic elements introduced um, to them, like they, it's like a new age of industrial metal, essentially, that we're going into. So I think that production follows here at the beginning. There was a little R&B that I was hearing in there as well, which again follows with things like Spirit Box. Um, really, really interesting. But then we got into this, I think this was a chorus. I think it's a chorus, I'm not sure. And so much more of his sound. We're getting that extra grit on top, a little bit of distortion on the sound to give it some gravel, right? And it looks like one of his bandmates, I don't know who, <laughs> couldn't find that one on the internet, um, but one of his bandmates looks like he's doing um, some backing up with some harsh vocals there. So shout out to, to other singer as well. Awesome, I like the layering. Let's keep going. <laughs> Wow. wow. So his lows are the part that we've heard like super, super gathered at first through the tube, this part not at all through the tube. And it it has, it sounds to me like there's the extra soft palette drop that's happening there. So he can get just a tiny bit extra nasal resonance and get some more cut on those lows. Those lows are very, very present. I'm having no difficulties whatsoever hearing them. It's a very nice balance, especially when I heard him jump up higher. Like everybody gets super excited when a singer goes high and it sounds great, right? But what they don't know is that some singers can sound great up high and then they get to their lows and they just drop out and it's it's missing the bottom. So his, he's able to get both very, very well. And I think it's all about the way he's essentially threading his resonance on his lows to achieve that. I hear that upper, upper doubling again. Oh, that was so cool. Okay, sorry, I talked through it. I hear the upper doubling again. There's this, like a flicker as well, this moment that happens that is, uh, it's a little ear candy. <laughs> Nice, nice. I really 
like the way they have a, a super clear sing-alongable melody in this, and then they have the harsh vocals backing them up, and underneath we just hear the instruments ripping it up. Right, they they are totally creating this havoc, this chaos, a bed of chaos, if you will, and then but through all of this we have a melody which i like that combination i like it when we have expression of all different types that are combining really uh really awesome it just it hits really hard too right it's like it's exciting i want to come back here again because when he jumps up there there's a lot of features in his voice that i want to talk about that that skipping that we're hearing in several different places is so cool. So cool, I love it in their sound. So he gets up onto his top range there and I like the way I hear so much nice closure on the chords. He's uh, He keeps the sound leaner and it sounds like that's, uh, to me, it sounds purposeful. I've heard a few times when it starts to kind of widen out and get even more body underneath, like that, there is a natural state there that can have more body in his sound. But when he's hollering up here like this with a lot of power, it's just better to keep it a little bit leaner for longevity of vocal health. Then we have a little a bit of that distortion he's adding in as well. And then even little cries there. So it's almost like, the way he's structuring his voice up there, it it almost approaches some pop singers in their particular approach to vocal technique, but then it's pulling in this rock with the distortion. I think when you pull all the other elements together, we get something, I wanna say more metalcore. That cry, I like that cry. <laughs> I'm really curious if he put that ah uh, at the end of the phrase, if that was in one take or if that was layered on top. It's a, I haven't heard somebody do that right afterwards like that before. It's <laughs> really cool. come from an opera singer and be like, yeah, good job when you're screaming, but good job. Like, that was, I feel that that was really, really successfully done in layering two different timbres of screams together between two different people. It was uh, good and it, it sounded to me like it was healthy screams, which is exciting. It sounded like that was uh, screams made by uh, structures that are in the upper part of the larynx, right? Hopefully we don't want to see those true folds screaming like that because they are made to go wacka, wacka, wacka in a very periodic way. They're a little uh, fragile. And if you try to scream uh, with the vocal folds, then they smack, a smack, a smack. Uh, and you don't really want them to do that because then they can't wacka, wacka, wacka nicely, cleanly afterwards. Uh, but if you're using the structures above, we those structures seem like they're more hardy. And, uh, and we've seen them used in so many different ways already to create some of these harsh sounds. I get really nerdy about this right now because I'm actually researching it. <laughs> I know, crazy. Um, but I, yeah, that was, that was just really well done. Okay. Ah, it's such a good breakdown. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
Yeah. So, and there is so fascinating because I can hear that it, it seems like the pitch centers of those two screams are in totally different places. Almost like Collins wants to have a melody underneath him. But again, I, I think that there's a, a combination. The, the distortion of it, I don't think is made in two vocal folds. I think we're talking about something above it. But we get that pitch center still underneath, which is part of what's distinguishing them. One more time on that part. There's that like filter again. Whoa, it's almost like they took, uh, it sounds like they took Antari's auto tune and, and decided to make that sound super crazy and then double it up high afterwards there. Uh, that, that particular uh, plug can give a very clear sound imprint. Uh, <laughs> one more time. They make it more robotic there. Uh, this this strangely reminds me a little bit of some of the production done in Porter Robinson's first album. If you guys are into electronic music, you know what I'm talking about, that sort of more robotic voice. It's fascinating to hear that incorporated in here. Really, like, this is produced so that we can hear the sound of the production here. Was some really nice layering in there. This is a heavy. Reminds me a little bit of, of ginger heaviness too. With all of those electronic elements, and it's got it's got something new and different going on here. I I get why there's some obsession and why there's there's some uh good rumblings about this. Like it also, this is the first. Oh, whoa. Well, I am really curious now who has been producing this because I think that the production technique is one of the things that is making this down, stand out as something really fresh. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm curious where they come from. Like, what's their background? It feels like they must have come maybe more from R&B into this world. Uh, I'm not sure. It's exciting though. It's, it's really exciting. So like, right there, we were managing to get the lead, I think at least a couple of harmonies, a couple of backings in the voices, but then we also had a harsh backing and all of it was clear. That's good. That's really good. I'm sorry, I had to stop it because I thought it was about to end on me. I can't let it end on me. This is this is supposed to be like metal. Can it be longer, please? Okay, I know, especially if we're talking something like Grammys and getting new new bands on that radar. Sometimes it's just more ingestible. People like to see songs that are between three and four minutes, maybe five, but I think even though Metallica just won the Grammy with a much longer song, uh, that's a whole nother history of Metallica. Um, I think that longer songs generally don't get tons of radio time. Um, although that's changing because of, of different streaming platforms now. So all of this is to say, when I say I'm spoiled by metal, there are tons of things about metal that can spoil the person. But that term, that phrase, 
was originally coined because I wanted a song to be longer. Metal to me, like the great, 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 great good stuff is when I can continue to just lounge in it, let it pour over my soul, let it shake my body for like seven or eight minutes straight. That's a good spot. That's a sweet spot. So uh, just uh, just uh, sleep theory, y'all. I like your music. I like it enough that I want it to be twice as long. Can we get longer, please? <laughs> I love that go. Yes. Yeah. That is super fresh. I love the way it's combining elements from different backgrounds. And I like that all of the production is so clean and edgy at the same time. That production is very exciting. Overall, the sound of the band is just very exciting. And I think that Colin's voice is only going to continue to blast through it all. It's gonna be really exciting to hear what else they put out. Uh, if you would like to see some more music that I consider edgy, that's like paving the way forward, you can check out this playlist over here. May you fall more in love with music every day. Mwah.